Now, y'all already know what time it is. It is time for the mess. So let's get into it. What's going on, you guys? It's be your boy, Scotty by Nature TV, and we're here for a brand new episode of Yes for the Mess, okay? I'm doing this before I head off to the dentist. I go to the dentist in like two hours. Y'all already know what my journey has been for, you know, a li literally almost two years. I've been having the journey of getting my teeth to the best place that they need to be, okay? And when I get home from the dentist, I'm going to do a video about my journey, why I went and got my teeth done and all of that great stuff. I'm going to do that once I get home, but the video won't be coming out until the end of the week. That's one of the videos that I'm using to keep y'all fed while I'm gone because after tomorrow, there probably won't be that many more videos, but I'm, gonna, if, I'm, I'm probably going to take Maddie's advice and still try to film while I'm gone, it's just that I may have to use Jamar's laptop or something like that while I'm out so I can still film while I'm out. I'm still going to try to give y'all, because Maddie even said, you know, bitch, while we out, I'm still got to get my coin. I'm still going to be filming while we get out, so you may need to do the same thing. So I'm probably still going to film while I'm gone. I don't have a laptop, so I'm probably going to ask Jamar for his so I can still give y'all the videos. But for the most part, I'm going to try my best to keep y'all fed while... um while I'm gone, I know tomorrow going to be a busy day with me with videos because I'm trying to put out as many videos as I can so they can stretch out. Um, but before we go into anything else in regards to this tea that I want to talk about, um, of course, I got to do my promotions for the things I have coming up. Um, me and Playboy Mighty, he's a popular TikToker and rapper from the same city as me. We will be doing a collaboration soon, okay? Once he comes back from his truck route, we will definitely be um, on the move and we'll be doing our collaborations, honey. So be on the lookout for that. Um, it's going to be a good time. So, uh, And Maddie is a great time in it. I mean, not my, not Maddie. Maddie is a good time anyway. So the, the, like I said before, the things that you see on TikTok, that's exactly how he is in person. So um, without any further ado, let's get into the promo for your favorite reality TV panel. All right, you guys, and that was the promo for the upcoming season of the Whether You Like It or Not panel, okay? And we will be covering Basketball Wives and Real Housewives of Atlanta. We don't know any premiere dates for either one of those shows. However, once we get the premiere date for at least one, we will give you guys the premiere date for the Whether You Like It or Not panel. Also, me and Terrence and Josiah are discussing doing roast a review again for um candy show um you guys enjoyed us together when we did Porsche's family matters so we feel like candy show could be a, another um show for a standalone panel like roast the review so if you guys want to see roast the review just let us know and we are still in talks about it we got a couple of weeks before the show comes on so we'll see what we're gonna do with it okay now however let's get into today's mess okay now we're gonna start this thing off with blue face apparently Blueface has been arrested for a gun possession charge on Saturday morning in Hollywood, okay? Um, so, you know, the Tatiana rapper has been arrested for it, and we're going to get into it. I'm going to just tell y'all one thing about Blueface. Blueface has never tickled my fancy, y'all. And it's, he just, I, I just, I, I can't really put my finger on it. Blueface is like he don't bathe. I'm just saying, but whatever. That's, that's all I got to say on that. But uh, let's get into it. Okay, now this article comes from Complex.com, so we're about to go into it and dissect it. Um, Blueface was arrested on Saturday morning on a gun possession charge. TMZ reports the 25-year-old rapper was pulled over around 3 a.m. at the intersection of Sunset and Vine in Hollywood for driving with an expired registration. After running a computer check, police discovered that Blueface had a suspended license. Law enforcement ordered the rapper and three other passengers to exit the 
the the vehicle at which point cops found a loaded firearm in the center console of the vehicle blueface was taken into custody on a single charge of carrying a concealed weapon in the vehicle none of the other three individuals appear to be arrested um the news arrived several months after blueface last landed himself in hot water with law enforcement back in september the los angeles native was accused of attacking a bouncer at a nightclub in san Fernando valley sources tell tmv that blueface was stopped at the entrance by a security guard who asked to see proper identification after admitting that he didn't have his id things allegedly turned physical as the rapper and a couple of friends jumped the bouncer and left the man was taken to a local hospital where he was treated for bruises scratches and required stitches okay so I think that's the end of this particular um, complex article or whatever. So, yes. Yeah. So, uh, 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 yeah. So that was pretty much the article surrounding um, Blueface. And all I got to say is this right here. You walk, like, boy, first of all, boy. I, I really want to. I really want to say it's mainly because of how old you are, right? Because you are 25, so you really ain't got the sense that God gave you. Because when I was 25, I definitely didn't have the sense that God gave me either. So I'm going to I'm gonna chalk it up to you being 25. But it's just like, why would you be driving around? It's one thing to drive with a suspended license. Sometimes that shit just happens. You know what I mean? Because no matter what, you still got to get to where you're going. So sometimes driving with a suspended license or no license, it is what it is. I can't even knock you for that. But why would you be driving around it, around the town with a tag that's expired? Now, that's one thing I ain't finna do. Like, soon as the month comes, I'll go and get that expiration shit changed. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is just me because I ain't got no time for no police to be trying to pull me over for nothing. Okay? Because, you know these cops love to try to pull us over for any lip any little thing possible they love to do that and you already know then we black then you sitting up here being um you black and you got money and ain't no telling what kind of car you is driving because you know what you driving a specific type of vehicle of course they gonna try to sit up and try to uh stop you for anything so that's what i'm saying with that like you got you got to know what's good you know what i'm saying so i don't know but blue face and then on top of that you was just arrested for attacking like a bouncer at a club like that shit ain't that that shit ain't cool either you know what i mean like it's and now and now you and now you arrested for gun possession it's just crazy to me like these these boys get into some crazy ass shit they really do like these boys get into some stupid shit all the time and it's really ridiculous to me but like i said bust down tatiana i want to see you bust down like blue face just don't like i just I just shake my head at Blueface just for his whole existence. It's just what it is to me. Like, I'd I be like, boy, like, ooh, girl, like, I don't know. But, you know, to each his own child. If y'all like Blueface, to each his own. Wasn't he the same one who said that he slept with like a hundred women in one month or some shit like that? And I was just looking at the damn article one time. I don't even know if I really reported on that story. I think I just talked about it on Facebook one time. He was talking about all the women that he slept with. And I'm just like, why did they want to sleep with you anyway? why I'm, I'm trying to understand like why why would they want to sleep with you at all why why you know what i'm saying i i don't i don't understand it but whatever everybody got a type i guess and the type is money so whatever so let's move on so we're about to get into wendy williams now there's been a lot of speculation about what's really going on with wendy williams they've been saying that she's real sick they've been saying she's going through dementia they've been saying that she's dealing with graves disease they've been talking about her money and how wells fargo is um keeping her funds from her and it's just like we really don't know what's going on and we ain't heard nothing from wendy just from people that's around wendy and that's and this is why i'm getting sick of talking about this story but let's get into what she got to say because apparently she denies struggling with her mental health at all so this is an article from page six.com we're about to get right on into it real fast okay so let's talk about it so how's wendy williams doing just fine she says the talk show host denied on monday that she is struggling with her mental health after her bank claimed that she is an inca incapacitated person who needs guardianship 
Wendy wants the world to know that she um, denies all allegations about her mental health and well-being. Williams lawyer LaShawn Thomas said in a statement to page six, Thomas said his client who has not hosted her daytime talk show since July of 2021 has spent her hiatus employing holistic health professionals to help her re reach optimal health during her treatment of Graves' disease and thyroid concerns. The attorney went on to insist that Williams, age 57, is doing fine and is of sound mind after her former financial advisor, Lori, um, claimed the opposite, leading Wells Fargo to cut off access to the millions of dollars in the former shock jocks' accounts, okay? She's completely disappointed about falsely circulated statements from an industry she has devoted her life to thomas said wendy is grateful for the love and the outpouring of support she has received from her fans and she can't wait to get back she thanks everyone who has been patiently awaiting her return and believes that thanks in large no in, in large part to the love and support of her son her family and her new team of doctors and a change of scenery she is on the mend okay thomas added wendy says to her fans how you doing with, uh, William spoke out via Thomas after requesting a temporary restraining order against Wells Fargo, which recently froze her accounts out of concern that she is a victim of undue and financial exploitation, according to the bank's attorney, David. David Pickers, I'm sorry. Pickers claimed to New York Supreme Court judge um, Arlene Bluth in a letter obtained by Page Six last week that... Um, Schriller had witnessed signs of exploitation, including Williams' own expressed apprehensions about the people that was around her, okay? But the TV personality and her lawyer, Celeste McCall, both denied the allegations with Williams calling Schriller a disgruntled former employee. She is saddened that she once considered this person a friend. Thomas Saylor Schriller and Monday's statement. Wendy can't believe that Wells Fargo has wrongly denied her access to her funds without justification. She has spoken to several bank representatives, has even gone into a local branch and discussed this issue with bank managers as clear evidence that there are no concerns about her state of mind. A spokesperson for Wells Fargo previously told us that the bank denies any allegations of improper actions with respects to Ms. Williams' accounts. Bluth has yet to grant or deny the restraining order request, okay? So that was the page six article in regards to um, Wendy Williams and her funds and her mental health and everything that's going on with her. Do we really know what's really going on with Wendy Williams? Or are we really just guessing and wondering what's really going on with her? Because I really, we really don't know at this point. And it's a lot. Like, it, it really is a lot. And I really don't know what to say at this point because it's like, girl, what's really, what, what's, what's Gucci? Like what's, like, like, what's gooey at this point? Like, what's really going on right now? Because it's like, girl, like, like, are you serious? Like, do you really, do you seriously not know what's really going on with your funds? Is that really what it is? Because, you know, or is it just these people that you got around you that is like taking advantage of you being sick and going out here, putting out fake stories? Because every other day we have another story about Wendy and her mental health. Every other day we got a story about her health period or how she's going through dementia and she don't remember nobody and stuff like that. Every other day we got a story about you not being able to pay your bills because your money is locked up. Let me get these different stories and then we get these articles just like this that came out and said, well, Wendy said, did she really say? It because we really ain't heard Wendy say nothing about nothing. She got people speaking for her. So at this point, I would love it if Wendy could come out and say what she needs to say because all these third parties and second parties and fourth parties and fifth parties and sixth parties is really getting under my skin right now because it's like we really don't know what the hell is really going on at this point but all I can say is I'm going to keep Wendy in my prayers child. My heart goes out to her honey because at this point we really don't know what to do or what to say right now to be real. You know what I'm saying? So um, yeah. Uh huh. So without um, so let's move on to the next thing, which is Andy Cohen. Now, apparently, this story is a little bit old. I'm like 14 days late, but I did not know anything about this story until a couple of days ago. But it's basically about Andy Cohen admitting that he hates one or two housewives just as much as the rest of us do. So let's get into this article from Bustle.com where Andy Cohen discusses this. Okay, so let's read the article and dissect it. 
Okay, so Andy Cohen didn't hold back during a recent edition of Watch What Happens Live's Ask Andy segment. The Real Housewives executive producer was asked a variety of questions about the hit Bravo franchise, including which housewife he would bring back, which one he misses the most, and who and who he would go on vacation with. The 52-year-old host also revealed if there's any housewives that he can't stand, okay? If Andy had his pick, he told the audience that he would bring back Real Housewives of Atlanta star Phaedra Parks. Love Phaedra, he said, per TMZ. The 48-year-old lawyer was fired from the show after season nine for spreading a rumor about Candy Birds and her husband, Todd Tucker, were planning to D-R-U-G and R-A-P-E Portia Williams. Um, according to the outlet, the clip never aired because, because, um, Burris threatened the network when asked which housewives he missed the most. Cohen responded with Vicki Gunvalson and Beth Bethany Frankel. Gunvalson, an original Real Housewives of Orange County cast member, was on the show from 2006 to 2019. She was also supposed to be a part of a spinoff series on Peacock, but Page Six report in March that the network had canceled her contract. Frankel, for her part, starred on The Real Housewives of New York from 2008 to 2019 for a total of 13 seasons. Apart from Gunvalson and Frankel, Cohen doesn't miss many of the former housewives. Um, usually, if they're not on, they're not on for a reason, he said. But that doesn't mean he would pass up the opportunity to go on vacation with some of them. When asked who he would willingly go on a trip with, Cohen said he would be down to travel with three of the quietest members, Portia Williams, Kyle Richards, and Heather Gay. Um, elsewhere in the segment, Cohen confessed to hating one or two of the housewives, but he's put person put aside his personal feelings for the good of the show. However, it's worth noting that the housewives aren't the only ones making quality TV. During an Instagram I um, uh, Q and A on January the seventh, Cohen was asked who his favorite house husband is. He responded with the photo of Melissa Gorgas, Joe Gorga from The Real Housewives of New Jersey. I don't have a favorite, but I think we could all agree that he this man is a Hall of Famer. Joe isn't the only um, Bravo husband that the Watch What Happens Live host praised recently. A few days after fielding fan questions on Instagram, Cohen admitted to having a slight crush on um Lisa Vanderpump's husband, Ken Todd. I got to tell you something, he said. We showed a vintage clip of Ken Todd the other night, and I found myself looking at him in a different light. Okay, so that was the a Bustle article about um, Andy Cohen, about how he hates, secretly hates one or two housewives as much as everybody else do. And I must say that I feel like those two housewives that he hates Correct me if I'm wrong. Tell me if you agree with me or not. Because I said it already somewhere else. And somebody else claimed that they that they get they don't believe me, but they only don't believe me because they, they they're sins of this person. Okay, so stay with me on that. The first person that I want to name is Candace Dillard. I definitely feel like he don't like Candace. And I don't think that Candace particularly cares for Andy Cohen either. Like, um, yeah, I think he, I think he can't stand Candace at all. Like she be getting him together, especially based off the stuff that she said in that book. I definitely feel like he probably can't stand Candace. I think they have a very tumultuous relationship, especially with the way he handles certain things like that. Candace and Monique fight and stuff like that. Like, just like I said, you can work for a part for a person, but not necessarily like them too much. Cause at my job, I work for someone that I can't stand. So yes, I understand where, where that's coming from. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, yes, I definitely feel as though Candace don't like him. Candace don't like Andy at all. And I don't think that Andy likes Candace at all, period. I don't think he likes her at all. It's really like, it's just a, like, if you notice, he's very subtle with, with who he doesn't like. And you can see it a lot of the times. Like he really tries to, um, he really tries to, um, hide it and hold it and hone it on in, but he really don't like these people. Now, the next person that I want to say that I feel like he hates is Kenya Moore. I've always felt like he never liked Kenya. I mean, look, he loves Portia and, and, and Phaedra, you know, he liked them type of people, but he don't like Kenya. He definitely don't like her because it's been many a times where he's shown a lot of frustration to Kenya. He's acted like he really couldn't stand Kenya. Like this, the vibe that he gives to me. 
I'm, I, I'm going to say that. That's the vibe that he gives off, in my opinion. I've always felt like he didn't like Kenya. And I feel like he was glad that Kenya was fucking gone, to be honest. So, yeah, um, I don't think it's too far-fetched. Um, I definitely feel like Candace and Kenya are the two girls that fit that whole standpoint of the two women that he probably don't like. But if I was Andy, I probably wouldn't have said this shit out loud. I probably would have played the fifth on that because it's going to make him look very unprofessional to talk about who he hates. But then again, it doesn't matter. Even though you may be running something at the end of the day, it may be some people that you just don't care for. It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So we can move on to the next thing. So um, as you guys already know, last year we talked about Lisa Ray McCoy and um, the brat and how Lisa Ray pretty much scolded the brat on um, the real. Well, yeah, it wasn't the real. It was cocktails with it was cocktails with queens on um on Lisa Ray's birthday. They surprised Lisa Ray with the brat, and it was revealed that Lisa Ray had not heard from the brat in months. She did not know that the brat was coming out publicly. She was finding out stuff on um on TMZ on the blogs. You know, she was finding out things with everybody else. That's what she was doing, and um I really do feel bad for Lisa Ray. But right now, I got an article and some audio here from TMZ.com where Lisa Ray is talking about what's going on between her and DeBrat. Let's get into it. Um, where the picture at? Let's put it up there. Let's put it up there. All right. So let's talk about it. Now, Lisa Ray McCoy is laying down some surprising facts about the brat's pregnancy, saying that she didn't even get a phone call that her sister was expecting. The actress was on a new podcast, It's Tricky with Raquel Harper, when she opened up about her rough relationship with her sister. It all spilled out when Rocky asked how she felt about the brat having a baby. You got to see this. LR took a moment and then dropped a one word response. Wonderful. The tension was obvious as she explained that she found out about the baby news on social media. Lisa Ray was visibly upset and said that the whole ordeal takes me back. A clear reference um, to the last time the sisters got together publicly on Lisa Ray's Fox Soul show, Cocktails with Queens. McCoy was celebrating her 53rd birthday when DeBrat made a surprising appearance, which started as a sweet tribute to the Chicago native's childhood, ended with um, LR getting irate with the brat. So if y'all want a flashback of that, let me play that really fast for you guys. I have to say at the end of the day, I would, I would say thank you Queens for allowing and hold on you guys. Taking it, You know, now it's all good. But I think that y'all should like, you know, pick up the phone. Like put whatever that was to bed. Lisa Ray, she's clearly touched by you making this appearance. So, I mean. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it was nothing bad. We've never had like bad blood ever. We've Children Punk? Where you get <laughs> yeah. that nickname from? I'm big. I'm Lil Punk. She Big Punk. We've oh. always called each other that since kids. Oh, right. Since Lisa Ray is clearly she's emotional. She can't really talk. Yes. Right. Can you just tell us like one of your most fondest memories of Lisa Ray? Like something you could share with us? Like I mean, anything well, I, we got a lot of fond memories of whooping people's asses together. Oh, <laughs> <my Lord. laughs> oh but, uh, I guess I. You probably know what should, I'm saying? I mean, I you know, that, talk, that, 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 I probably shouldn't talk about that. When I was younger, still in high school. Like she used to let me borrow her her, her Celica. She had a white drop top Celica, and the car oh, was just like it was so dope. And I just felt so fly in it. And I felt like, yeah, I'm somebody. She used to let me borrow it. It had a cell phone, and the cars didn't have cell phones back then. So I thought I was really doing something. She bought she bought me a scooter. Well, she had a scooter, and she I think she was. She wasn't going to throw it away, but she didn't really ride it. And I was so excited. She gave it to me. And it was like my most prized possession. And I got on the mother. Oh, I probably can't cuss. You and you I got, got you got And I got, got on it. With queen, I got on it and crashed into her car. Oh, I <laughs> got today. I was so nervous. I was so nervous. But that uh, we, it's, we got so many memories. Like, yeah. uh, just, <laughs> I could go on forever. Like you know, the brat, yeah. you see that I, I, we didn't know that there was a space, and that's why this makes it even more special that you were willing to come on here and do this. 
So wow. like, I, I don't want to feel uncomfortable, but I think this is a great time to bridge that gap with yeah. all that on the world. You got you have uh, congratulations to you on your new love in your life that we saw that yes. was cool. And then Lisa Thank Ray you. really moved. I think now would be could be a, a great time to like put whatever that was to bed. Lisa Ray, she's clearly touched by you making this appearance. Yeah. So, I mean, oh yeah, like I said, it was nothing bad. We've never had like bad blood ever. We've never had bad blood. We might get mad at each other or something, but we never like not talk. So this was a first for a long time for us to not like talk. But you know, my sister can get real critical sometimes and. She don't care what she say or how she make you feel sometimes. And that's just yeah. who she is. And that's her being a protective big sister. But sometimes as a little sister, you'd be like, I'm grown too, you know, and I don't <laughs> think she ever accepted the fact that I don't you think grown she's ever accepted the fact that I've grown up. Like, yeah. you know, Aww. but it, it's not cool. And it's my fault that the I space to know that you're happy. I am. And I just did not want to just hear it from the blogs. And from the interviews of people asking me questions and I didn't know what to say because I didn't hear it from you and I got to see it someplace else. And so I'm hurt. That's what I am. It's all love though, mama. Y'all can talk about it, you know, now it's all good, but I think that y'all should like, you know, pick up the phone and holler at each other. Don't let no yeah, more time I'm pass. Do that for months. Okay. Well, baby, try again. You know what? I think y'all need I'm in the wait. I'm in the waiting zone. So I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm cool. See, that's what I'm talking about right there. It's all good, girl. You know how. What's she that? Y'all talk. What's that? You're not in like the waiting zone. Don't do that. Why, why I'm not? <sighs> oh, don't ruin your birthday, L Ray. Come on. No, 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 no. Because everything else is playing out. You know what I mean? Via Instagram, via blogs, via all of that. Because what I'm finding out is all through that way. I'm not finding out nothing and shit personally. So I, I guess my place is not what I thought it was. That's so not true. Late. That's not true. Well, Lisa Ray, I think that, you know, just putting my two cents in because y'all family. So y'all know what right. time it is in real life. But you know, for Brett to come on here is a yes. step to say, you know, I love you. I want, I, this is my way of coming, you know, to you without, you know, being in a predicament where you, you have to go back and forth and argue with her. She exactly. may want to be able to communicate with you. And this might have been, may have been a good way to kind of break the ice before she can do that, you know, alone first, you know what I'm saying? So you know, you 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 got it going on on the mean side sometimes. So <laughs> she's saying. So, in other words, she's saying your no, sister no. handing you an olive branch. Right. You know what I mean? Your sister handing you an olive branch. She, yeah. No, she. Ain't there she, we go. She not, no, she not trying to hear that. She. She will. But that's what the brat. That's what we here for as women to help her hear it. Because I know yeah. you, and it's good to see you happy. You know, Absolutely. and sometimes when people are in love, I Lisa Ray, you don't want to tell that. your family because your family going to be was. too opinionated about shit. I wish that I could have a say in that myself. I, I wish that I knew what was going on, but I don't. Okay, and so well, then I sit and you know, I wait. You know what? When you're so I will say this. I am happy for you. Good. I am glad that you are living in your truth. That right there, we've been talking about for years and for you to just be so happy and so vibrant that right there is a blessing to be able to stand in that that right there is what i believe in that's what i talk about that's what i envision and so for that right there i will say have at it and i love you like yes. i appreciate you coming out and, and and verbally saying happy birthday to me this kind of way because i damn sure ain't heard from you in months okay so you know, um you guys are both celebrities and a lot of times the problem, that's why I'm not trying to say that much is other people making shit worse and saying stuff. I think y'all needed this moment and, and to say what y'all have to say at the end of the day. I would, I would say thank you Queens for allowing and making it happen because I'm not sure how long it would have been. What it's been like, but almost like a since what? Hey, December hey, or something like that. Stop, baby, no more. But, 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 here now. I don't like what, what y'all saying. I don't give a fuck what y'all saying at all. Y'all don't know shit at all. 
She do. You do. You do. Well, on oh, this okay. okay. Well, that was the flashback from that when um, we first found out about Lisa Ray and the Brett not really having any contact with each other, okay? And um, yeah, so yeah, so this is uh, when she was on It's Tricky with Raquel. Um, she, she spoke about um, the issue between her and the Brett, and this is what she had to say about it now. Here we go. Oh, you know, I was thinking also, um, the brat just said that she's having a baby. Um, how do you feel about her having a new baby? Wonderful. You're really excited. And do you know the gender at all? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was, I was like, looking. I'm like, oh, you know, I've seen her just do the news recently. I'm like, oh, okay. Did you find out through the news or did you guys talk about it already? Um... <laughs> I found out through social media. Mm, that's wild. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. This takes me back. Mm. <laughs> it takes me back. Because I'm sure that you have heard of the last kind of encounter that we had that went viral. Have you not? Well, no, I was watching your Ricky Smiley interview, mm. and I was no, watching your Ricky Smiley interview uh, when you called up, and they were talking about they had something. You called up sometime early in the morning. Mm -hmm. No, this one happened on Cocktails with Queens, and uh, she came to say happy birthday to me and surprised me, and we hadn't spoken in so long, and I ended up having to, uh, I guess, that what they said, cussed everybody out um, on the show because she had came out. And I'm getting interviewed and people were like, oh, how do you feel about your sister coming out? And I'm like, coming out of what? You know, because mm -hmm. I'm thinking I got to say some more politically correct type answer because I don't know what they're talking about. And there was a whole life that was going on on social media that I just really didn't know nothing about. Okay, so that was Lisa Ray with um, It's Tricky with Raquel, okay? And I must say that to be honest, I feel, I do feel bad for Lisa Ray. I know a lot of people probably won't feel bad for Lisa Ray, but I feel bad for Lisa Ray. I really do because it sucks that when you have a sibling and then it, there's a lot of personal stuff, there's a lot of amazing stuff going on with your sibling and then you're a public figure, the sibling is a public figure, and then you don't find out nothing until it comes out into the public when you really think that it should come out. You know, when, when, you know, you should be the first to know, but you're not, you're the last to know, but the people are the first to know. I can only imagine how that really feels. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could really understand how that feels. I could really feel her pain with that. Because I would feel some type of way if my youngest brother told everybody but me that he was having a baby or told everybody but me that he was getting married, I would feel a way about that. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, you know, why are all these people so important, but I don't know what's going on. And I could see it from Lisa Ray's standpoint, like, it's like, you know, when the brat came out, she didn't know that she had come out. And then she's doing interviews and people asking her a question and she didn't know how to answer the question. And then, you know, she come on cocktails with Queens and she's trying to surprise her for her birthday, knowing she ain't talked to her in like four, five months. Now it's coming across now that now my sister's having a baby and I know nothing about it. I had to find out with everybody else. That could be hurtful for someone. So I definitely understand where she's coming from. No doubt. No doubt. I know a lot of folks don't like Lisa Ray. But uh, I understand. I, I can't even lie. I do get it. Okay. So next up is Sierra and Russell Wilson. Okay. Um, apparently, there was that Drake Super Bowl party. And um, apparently, Future showed up. And they got, they bounced. Okay. So with that being said, let's get into the article from TMZ. All right, so Russell Wilson and um, Sierra beat a hasty retreat from a Super Bowl party after the father of one of her children showed up, a.k.a. Future. Russell and Sierra hit up Drake's show at the Pacific Design Center in WeHo on Saturday night, a party packed with celebs including Lizzo, Tiana Taylor, Cardi B, Offset, and Jack Harlow, okay? Little did they know, Drake had a surprise guest, Future. As you know, Sierra and Future had a difficult breakup, which became more complicated once she hooked up with Russell, who she became, who became super close to Baby Future. 
Shade was thrown on all directions. It's unclear where Future now stands with Sierra and Russell, but given their reaction after Future showed up, it doesn't seem like all is kumbaya. Russell was rushed to the car by the cops as they left for at the as they left the party. All righty then. So that was pretty much the gist of that situation. Sierra and Russell left the party once they realized Future was there. And honestly, I think it's about protecting your energy. That's what I think it's about. It's about protecting your energy. It's about saying, listen, this, this, this ain't my kind of party. I don't want to be at this damn party if it ain't my kind of party. So you can stay over there. I can be over here and I can do my thing over here while you do your thing over there. You know what I mean? So that's what I think. That's what I feel. That's what I know. Okay, that's what I know. That's my feeling, okay? That's what I think. That's what I feel. That's what I know, period. That's how I feel. I feel like they're protecting the energy. You know, a lot of people may feel like Sierra pressed and all this other stuff, but it's not about them being pressed. Like, for me, if if someone's in a room that I don't want to be around and this ain't my kind of party, I ain't finna be around them. And that's just what it is. Like, it is what it's like. People be feeling like it's like a grudge thing or you pressed or you still mad. It's not that. Like, I just want to protect my own energy. Like, if a person brings out the worst in me, I don't want to be near them. If a person is all about the drama, I don't want to be near them. If I know that the situation is not going to be good for me, I don't want to be near them. And that's just what it is. So, you know, I, I don't see nothing wrong with what they did. Protect your energy at all times okay protect your energy at all times okay that's my motto and that's the book and i abide by that okay period so we finna go into the last story of the day and it is the baby okay now the baby then spoke out about this fight that went down with Danny Lee's brother. Okay, he finally said his piece about it. And he's claiming self-defense. Okay, so let's get into this article that I got from Hip Hop DX with the baby. Okay, so the baby's relationship with his ex-girlfriend, Danny Lee, has had its fair share of rocky moment. All of it came to head on Wednesday, February the 9th, as the baby got into an altercation with Brandon Beals. The Danny Lee's brother at a bowling alley in California, okay? When stopped by paparazzi outside of a private party for Kanye West's um, up-and-coming Netflix documentary, the Blame It On Baby rapper made it clear that the only reason why he swung first in the fight against Bills was due to his protection. Self-defense, he calmly said before handing out autographs to the crowd surrounding him. You shouldn't run around threatening people. In footage shared to social media on Thursday, the baby can be seen throwing the first punch at Bills, who has more, who on more than one occasion called out the father of his sister's child due to alleged um, mistreatment. After Bills collapsed to the ground at the bowling alley, baby's entourage surrounds him and begins throwing punches at him. The incident left Bills with no, notice, noticeable cuts and bruises on his face. Although the baby took an impromptu victory lap following the fight, he also drew the attention from the Los Angeles Police Department who's looking into the baby for possible assault charges. Um, according to the security footage, the incident led to Carbon Ball promptly banning the baby and his entourage and the LAPD pondering whether or not baby should be charged with assault with a deadly weapon because Bills was kicked in the head while he was on the ground. The baby's fight with Bills is the latest in his lengthy saga with Danny Lee. After the two were on again and off again in their relationship the singer soon became became pregnant and gave birth to a baby girl in late 2020 last november officers were called to the baby's los angeles area home after he alleged that danny lee assaulted him the little bb singer now faces two assault charges relating to the domestic call and that was the article from hip hop dx okay so we're gonna touch on this real quick and then we're gonna be up out of here now do I feel like the fight was self-defense? There's so many different layers to this. One could say that Brandon Beals was making threats towards the baby, which he was. He did say, it's on sight when I see you. He said, I'm going to F you up when I see you. He said all of those things. So that is considered a threat. You are saying that when you see something, when you see me, you're going to do something to me when you see me. So in so many words, in my mind, when I see you, I got to be on go. When I see you, I got to be ready for the consequences. When I see you, you're going to try to, you're going to try something with me and I got to figure out what what's good. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it looks like. 
But then when the baby sees him at the bowling alley and the boy don't try to throw a punch and the baby is the first to hit him, then it looks like the baby instigated the fight. So in so many words, it could be it was self-defense because I was being threatened and I got into this situation and I saw him and my first instinct was to punch him because he said that when he saw me, he was going to do something. But on so, in so many layers, it's like, but he saw you and he didn't do shit. When he saw you, you did something. When he saw you, he didn't want to get punched and not you. So someone can say that that's not a threatening situation. You know what I mean? It could be looked at in two different ways. It can be like, he threatened me. So I felt like I had every right to punch him. In a sense, it's like he walked into a bowling alley. I wasn't going to do nothing to him. He walked up to me. He hit me. And looking at the camera, he walked up to the man and he hit him. That's really what happened. So it is what it is. So, you know, um, that's what I feel. That's what I think. That's what I know. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. It could go either way. You know, um, Brandon did make the threats. He did say it was going to be on and popping when he saw him. He said it on multiple times on social media. He made the threats. The baby saw him and he popped them off before he had the chance to. But in the same breath, would that go, would that go well with the law? Because yes, he was threatening you. There's plenty of evidence that he did. But when he saw you, did he do anything threatening to you? Did he try to hit you? Did he charge at you? Did he do anything that let you believe, led, led to you thinking that he was going to hit you? You know what I mean? That's what they're probably going to be looking at. So I don't know how this is going to fare for the baby at all. I really don't know, but it is what it is. So that's pretty much it for Yes for the Mess. Be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Also, be sure to um like uh click the notification bell so you can be notified when this video, when the video drops, okay? And um, what is it? Oh, and if you want to follow me on social media, be sure to follow me on Twitter and IG. They will be down below. But if you want me to follow you back on IG, because I do follow back on IG, because I'm always on IG, be sure to hit me up in the DMs with the hashtag Mrs. Team Scotty, and I would definitely follow you back, because that will let me know that you are a part of the team, that you are a part of the community, okay? With that being said, you guys, your boy is out of here until my next video. I will talk to you guys later.